There's no doubt that today we're living in a world that is full of stress. There's frantic activity and all of this impacts on our mind, body and soul. There are so many emerging therapies that help us address the problems that this is creating. For some they'll say it's way out there, it's new age. Others will say this is a godsend. It doesn't matter as long as it works for you. Modern research shows us that our blood chemistry is affected by our state of mind, that our brain causes the release of neuropeptides, the feel-good hormones, the neuro, the endorphins, the, the, they have a huge impact on our well-being. We know that we benefit from touch, it's always been known. And so we're looking at a whole range of touch therapies that help us boost our immune system by controlling the amount of endorphins that flow into our bloodstream. These might include physiotherapy, myotherapy, osteopathy, chiropractic, bone therapy, and today we're going to talk about Emmet technique, which is an involvement from all of these processes. Today we have a great opportunity to speak to Ross Emmett, who is here to talk to us about a technique he has developed called the Emmet technique, which is part of the touch healing process. Welcome to the show, Ross. Thank you very much. So, Ross. When a patient presents for the first time and has no idea what the Emmet technique is about, could you explain to us what you would say to them so that they knew what they were in for and what to expect? The Emmet technique is a sequence of small moves or points that activate, reactivate muscle memory. So if a muscle goes into trauma through shock or through an accident, the body then, will, all the muscles will tighten up to protect that area. I've worked out a sequence of, of switches, if you like, that if touched in a certain area or under a certain time frame will release the whole muscle area around it. Remind it of what it should be doing rather than allow it to sit in a dormant form thinking it's still got to protect. So I've worked out a sequence of, of, of moves or switches that will activate that muscle memory. It also has a, a thing that if you believe it or the body believes this is not the right thing you have the ability to switch it off. So if I have found the on switch, we have a safety valve that also can be used as an off switch. So you can turn it back to where it was. One of the few therapies where you get the opportunity to take it back to where you, initi uh, where you initially were. Today I'd like to go and demonstrate on Pam just how simple some of the moves are that we, uh, we do do. And I'd like to just show where Pam has some restriction in one of her shoulders. If I could ask Pam to just lift this hand up to your comfort zone and if you know it goes up comfortably beside her ear just take that down please and now using the other hand take that up to its comfort zone and she has a tendency to lean her head into it and the arm has a bend so we're just going to get that to drop down and then I'll very gently just come across here and make a small selection of moves And then I'm going to just give this uh, a little time for the brain to take in the information that I've put in there and then allow her to now take that up to your comfort zone now, please. And if you could give us any feedback on that at all, please, Pam. Yeah, it, it seems freer and um, I've, it's comfortable. And it doesn't seem, I don't, I don't know, you're looking at me. And Doesn't there's less to... lean on the head as she's coming yeah. in. Another area that I can demonstrate is on head rotation. And if we were to just lightly turn Pam and ask her to just move her head to the left as far as she can and then back to the right as far as she can. And she has this kink or kick over onto the right hand side. If I was to do just some appropriate small moves And there are, I'm doing this in a sequence of three because the body has a, a point of recognition. That's when I first touch it. Then a point of correction. There it takes the information in like a good computer and uses it. And then I'll go back in the next one after a short period of break and I confirm that it has changed to me and her brain takes in, it's not as sensitive. And then I'll ask her now to turn as far as you can to the right, please. Does that feel any different to you or any feedback that you'd like to share with us? I, f I feel I can turn it further. Great, thank yeah. you. For so what was your motivation? Obviously you worked with animals at the start. Was that the motivation to get there and to help people um, into the, a, a better sense of well-being? My first, my first love uh, in the technique was 
for animals and I um, developed it from assisting them. I worked for an animal research car when I first left school. So when I seen an animal in distress, I used to go in and uh, assist with just light hands-on contact. I found later on that sometimes as, as I became uh, more involved in animal training, I was a dog judge, that the handlers were having as much difficulty as the dog. So I would then go and just give those little assistant moves to the handler and that was when uh, things started to progress. What would you say are the most typical complaints that patients present with, the, the, the ones that you would find more often? When patients present to me, the most common problem would be in, the, in muscular areas uh, of the lower back, shoulder and neck area. But that doesn't take away, there are many other areas that will respond very quickly to an activational point, to one of these body switches. The long-term benefits from having the Emmett technique applied, does that come more from the physical readjustments they've made or is there a certain percentage of that, their attitudinal approach as well? It's actually, uh, it's, it, the, when a person presents with a problem, uh, I've got to treat both the physical and the, uh, and the mental response. I need to allow the body to recognise the fact that it, things aren't responding right, so I look for the switchboard. But then I have to go and re-educate by allowing a person to accept that, uh, that maybe they are thinking in the terms of restriction and th that I've already alleviated it, so therefore I've got to get the recognition back. So you have two places to go to. Uh, a mechanical response and then an attitude. So they are very important together. If you have a young person, keen, enthusiastic, who wants to get out there and assist people's well-being in the community, what advice would you give them about stepping forward in their life? If someone come to me who, be who believes that they would, uh, would like to help others and uh, the advice that I'd give out first is select the therapy they believe in. In other words, if they, they believe in massage, take to that massage field. Once they've got whatever field it is that they believe in, and uh, then they can look at the possibilities of utilising other skills that are out there. There's nothing worse than today than having one, one skill and then having it, you, uh, you select a skill or a training method and then you've been suppressed to learn other skills and I think today there's not enough uh, encouragement to grow and to experiment and to step out there. Some of the therapies that are out today are being put out there by gifted people. There's a, a move afoot to suppress that gift in others. So people are selling the man's gift but they're not allowing the growth in others to produce more of these talented people. I'd like to see that encouraged rather than suppressed. I've been talking today to Ross Emmett who's been here describing the Emmett technique. It's been most interesting, most informative. If you would like extra information, please visit the Pathways website. For more information about Pathways magazine, you can visit our website, which is www.pathways33.com. You'll find a whole range of alternative health products and services and DVDs. Now, after the break, Melissa Keogh is going to give us a great overview into Chinese medicine, so stay tuned. <laughs>